The sea doesn't just go up and down on an iceberg, it sort of rushes in on it and sucks itself out. So you gotta be really, really careful. At the same time, you gotta be careful that the rising wave is not coming behind you and it could just push you right into the iceberg. And plus the fact that you're trying to time the jump. Well, you want to get whoever's going ashore on the up wave. Watch your knee. And he's got, you know, seconds to get himself attached. Yeah, watch it. Good, 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 good. Because once his feet leave the deck of my boat, I, I'm out of there. You know, there's a couple times I've had a, you know, full speed reverse and she wasn't coming back because of the, 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 the in wave. The moving iceberg. When it comes along and then it hits a shoal, well then all, all of a sudden she's starting to roll. Ha! Ah. I really, really do not like the sound of this ice. I'm never going to get used to it. Ah! Oh my god. Ah! Pat Morrill. I'm uh, from Kimberley, uh, but now I live uh, up uh, the valley near Invermere. You know, I, I had a, a freelance uh, photography career that I shared with my partner Baiba uh, for over 25 years, you know, starting in Kimberley and then uh, eventually taking that business over into uh, the Rockies in Alberta. I started out just following uh, my curiosity, I mean, that's what got me into photography in the first place, you know, intense curiosity about seeing the world and, and uh, trying to grab as many life experiences as I could. And, and the camera actually became my uh, ticket to, the, to that lifestyle. And, uh, and then gradually, you know, I got into filmmaking uh, over about a 10 year period in the early 90s, wherein uh, I was I was going on these climbing expeditions and uh, uh, being hired to, f to shoot stills as well as to shoot video. And so that, that was a situation that, you know, was twice as much work, if you can imagine carrying, uh, you know, that, you know, twice as much camera gear and, and uh, shooting in two different mediums on, on, during the course of like a 30 or 60 day expedition. Uh, and then having to deal with the footage when you get back and all, you know, the sorting of the stills. Baiba and I just decided that we would just, you know, move straight over into film and uh, leave stills behind. In the course of doing that, the only type of still photography that I ended up you know, pursuing was uh, the point and shoot. You know, with the little, little uh, camera that uh, all you have to do is is bring it to your eye and, and you know, and it does a pretty good job of grabbing what's out there. I lost my interest in high-end still photography, you know, I, uh, just because of the, mainly the time factor of shooting video and working, editing video and all that. But through the, the little camera and digital photography and the ease of, you know, putting it onto your hard drive and your computer and then sending it, you know, spamming out to your dirtbag friends, you know, by email. So over the last several years, I've, I've actually built up quite a collection of pictures, uh, all, you know, taken with that little camera. And so, because of that, it's uh, actually brought renewed interest for me in, I guess, the art of still photography. If you consider that uh, many of the great photographs in the world were taken by amateur photographers um, from, historically even, you know, on the large format cameras, and it's not the equipment, it's the eye behind the camera. One of the things that makes me most happy about photography is uh, sharing it with uh, my friends and, and even people I don't know, you know through slideshows or magazines or books. You know, like it's, uh, you know, when you're, when you're out there experiencing uh, something really intense in the mountains or on the ocean or somewhere, uh, that's 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 the reward to me is is uh, the experience itself. The byproduct of that experience is the photograph, which I can then bring back and and uh, actually spread that that joy around. There is a need to 
raise people's consciousness through uh, socially responsible photography, you know, showing things like environmental degradation and, uh, you know, uh, slums in the cities and the, even in the towns. But uh, I think uh, equally or maybe more importantly, um, if we can show and focus on the, the brighter side of life and show potential, I think um, that's, uh, that's uh, where I want to try and concentrate my efforts in the future.